My uncle and cousin Matthew came to Pennsylvania to visit over a long weekend. As the weekend neared, a blizzard approached. First, only a few inches was forecasted, then five or six. Then it escalated to a foot or more. When they arrived late Friday night, the snow had accumulated to about mid-thigh deep. My uncle was ecstatic. Since he and his family live out in California, he wanted Matthew to experience the snow. I stayed overnight at my grandparents' house so that I could be a part of those memories, too. Sunday night, the night before they were flying home, my uncle wanted to take my cousin and myself hiking in the woods nearby up to a pond my uncle had skated on when he was a child. Matthew was really excited to go. He skated at home in California at a local rink nearby. Matthew was really excited to go. He skated at home in California at a local rink regularly. That must have been what he was expecting when my uncle said skating, but it wasn't that at all. We parked my grandfather's truck in a school parking lot near the forest and walked down the country roads until we reached the point in the woods where we were to start hiking. In three foot deep snow, Matthew was already tired before we had even begun our hike and was starting to whine like little kids do when they're uncomfortable and bored. My uncle went first, digging through the snow with his feet, packing it down so that I could walk without sinking all the way through the snow and falling over, which still happened too often for my taste. Matthew was lighter and didn't sink all the way through, but he still struggled to stay upright. The little plastic shovel that he insisted on bringing dragging behind him. Matthew walked slowly and morosely, complaining about how far it had been. We could still see the road behind us. For a while, I didn't say anything, concentrating on keeping him in front of me, not falling through my uncle's footsteps, and keeping a tight grasp on the black plastic bag that contained the skates that was slung over my shoulder. However, about ten minutes into the hike, the complaining got to me. I debated on scolding him, but he wasn't my kid, and would he really listen to his cousin that really wasn't that much older than himself? I decided on going the other way. Whenever he complained, I said something positive. I'm tired, Matthew would say. But think about how much fun it'll be when we get there. Or, it's a challenge. Challenges are good for the soul. And, it's an adventure. I'll bet you've never done something like this before, have you? Were some of the encouragements. I wasn't even listening to myself after a while. Nevertheless, this seemed to stifle the complaints until we arrived to the pond. It was overgrown with reeds and had way too much snow on it for my uncle to be able to shovel it out. It was impossible to skate on after half an hour of hard labor hiking, and Matthew was understandably distraught, saying to me, You know how you said this would be fun? Well, it isn't an inch fun. We were all relieved when my uncle found a way to get to a trail that ran past my grandparents' house, and to Matthew's joy, it was cleared mostly of the snow. The walk back to the truck was much easier, and Matthew's spirits had lifted. Even though I was exhausted, I found that I had actually had a good time. The positivity that I had preached had had more of an effect on myself than Matthew. I had made a challenge a little brighter by changing my outlook from negative to positive. Ever since that day, I have believed that a positive outlook can change your attitude.